basically the root word of intonation is tone, right? Oh. So that's essentially um, speaking firmly, um, speaking softly, okay, whisper, uh, yell or scream, mm. stuff like that. So you can see in most uh, in in most business settings the intonation is pretty straight, right? Like we we discussed the professional, academic. Uh, personal those modes of conversation yeah. but, but in business like if you're in meetings you're not going to put on a show so with meetings it's pretty straight it's like good afternoon ladies and gentlemen what we're going to do here is this 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 but with um with other aspects of speaking um like if you're if you're reading a story to your child when they're trying to go to sleep you're not going to read it like this so jack went up the beanstalk so you're gonna be like and then jack went up the beanstalk and they said, good night, good night. So the intonation is basically is how mm -hmm. firmly, how softly, how much breath, how much tone you use when you're speaking. Mm -hmm. So that's the chief there. Now, inflection means the best way to put it is, I guess I would say, intent or sort of the, uh, the emotion in the, uh, in the sentence. So... In a purely mechanical way, the inflection is, you know, if it's a statement or a question. So, um, so now one of them is a question, one of them is a statement. Yeah. So generally, we turn up at the end of the question. What is the time? Um, and then you go down for a direct statement. It is 630. Because if you said, hey, what's the, or what time is it? And I said, it's 630. Say, uh, is it? I don't know. Are you asking me? Like, hi, my name is Brent. I live in Toronto. I teach English. You'll hear that a lot with like millennials and like usually it's usually attributed to teenage girls who turn all their sentences up when they're talking. I go to school and I study chemistry and I went to a movie and we had a pizza. Like yeah. and that's, a, that's a really annoying after a while. I think it's very frustrating to listen to. <laughs> so that's uh, that's inflection. Basically, with a question, you turn it up with a statement, you you send it firmly down. It's 6.30. My name is Brent. I live in Toronto. My name is Brent. I live in Toronto. So that's, that's in a nutshell, the basics of okay. inflection. But this also gets into much more emotional things. Like if you are begging someone, um, you know, uh, you wouldn't say, please don't rob me. You know, somebody's holding a gun at you You say, please don't rob me. Things like that. So it's very common. It's nothing that I really need to teach. It's just something to keep in mind when you're reading because, they, you know, conversations, even though the, the mechanics of our language comes pretty straight out as far as where, it's, where the sounds are created, our language still has a flow. It still has an up and down sort of rhythm to it. Um, so when we're doing a drama script or a TV commercial or any kind of advertising-based thing, essentially – we want to keep people interested, so we have to vary the inflection. Um, the, one, of the, one of the exercises that I do is the real estate page. It's like, and here we have a lovely two-bedroom condominium in the heart of Marina del Rey. Eight bedrooms and five bathrooms complement the open space kitchen with a large balcony enough to seat a table for eight. Like the way they talk, you know, mm -hmm. like advertising style speech or – like a like a stewardess on like a flight attendant, you know. And the exits are in the front, the middle, and the back. If you would like yes. some water, please ring the bell. Be sure to look above for your oxygen thing, so it can. So there's a there's like a nursing, almost like a like a, a, a school teacher sound to those sort of instructions. Um, but if it's like if you're doing something like a high drama, like to be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or by taking up arms against a sea of trouble by opposing envy. Like just up and down like that. 
Um, so again, this is not something that you have to like, oh my God, how do I do this? I'm worried now. It's nothing to worry about. It's, it's really simple stuff. And you're, you're a normal human being. So you know how to read a story, right? So, but it is, um, I do have a lot of students who are completely monotonous with, uh, with the way they read. And I think part of that is insecurity because all they're thinking about doing is getting through it. They just want to get it done. So um, I've got a couple of pieces here that I hope will um, reflect on that. But um, I'll just do, I'll just pull on the, the other ones real quick. So an idiom, uh, usually it's uh, what we call local jargon. Jargons. Yeah. Jargon, lingo. Um, okay. Yeah, it's lexicon, I suppose. Those are, it's like you'll understand it best if you live in the community where those kind of language, where that kind of stuff is spoken. 